Have you ever wondered how a Synology Disk Station NAS would compare head-to-head -head against an Enterprise SAN? Today we're going to find out. It's early on a Saturday morning. I've got some time to kill since I'm on call with the customers, so I thought I would have a little fun and put my Synology DS1621 Plus NAS head-to-head -head against my HPE MSA2040 Dual Controller SAN. Now, this is going to be an interesting test. These particular products, you would not compare for placement inside of an enterprise environment. The enterprise NAS is for enterprise environments, whereas the DS1621 Plus, I would say, is more for home users, IT enthusiasts, uh, and small businesses. However, Synology does have offerings for uh, larger size businesses as well as the enterprise, so don't count those out. This is just a test to see how these do because I'm still on a day-to-day -day basis being very, very impressed with the performance that I'm getting out of this DS1621 Plus. Now, with all of this being said, this test won't be exactly fair. The HPE MSA2040 is configured in RAID 10 with 16 dual port SAS Enterprise Discs, whereas the Synology NAS is configured with, I believe, six times six terabyte WD Red Pro drives configured in RAID 5. So again, these aren't necessarily fair tests. The HPE MSA SAN has a little bit of a heads up. Um, another thing too is that the MSA 2040, while it does have dual controllers, it is configured in an active passive configuration with the LUN, whereas the Synology disk station just has the one controller because there are no redundancies except for the actual disks themselves um, when it comes to any type of failure. Again, another reason why you wouldn't put these head to head inside of an actual production environment. Uh, again, just a goofy test. Now, technically, with the MSA2040 being configured with RAID 10, that should offer a substantial increase of IOPS, along with the fact that this unit is using SAS disks, whereas the Synology DS1621 Plus is using RAID 5, uh, meaning that we have the uh, one drive's worth of storage dedicated to the parity block. Now, both of these units are going to be connected to an HPE DL360P Gen 8 server. Had to think about that there for a second. Uh, the MSA SAN has two 10 gig links, one from each controller, whereas the Synology Disk Station DS1621 Plus has a total of two links to a 10 gig switch over SFP plus DAC. And then from that 10 gig switch, it has two links over 10 gig to the DL360P server. So it should be very interesting to see how this pans out. So Let's just take a look at the hardware here. We've got the uh, 1621 Plus. It's all configured, healthy state. We have the six disks. Now, you'll notice that we have two NVMe disks inside of this unit. We are actually not using those. Um, we have it configured in RAID 5. And if we take a look at the disks, you'll notice that the two NVMe 800 gig uh, cache drives are not being used. Now, the MSA2040 does have cache built in. I don't know off the top of my head how much it is. It could be four gigabytes or six gigabytes, um, but that's another heads up that the MSA2040 will have. Now, if we jump over to the MSA2040 here, you'll notice that we are running the latest firmware version. And for those of you who know, especially you HPE guys, this is very important to make sure that we take advantage of all the virtualized storage capabilities of this. You'll notice in the port section, we have uh, two 10 gig uh, connections per controller. Um, we have the two disk groups. Now, if we jump down to the actual pools here, uh, we're going to be testing against pool A, which is configured in RAID 10. We've got uh, 7.2 terabytes of storage, 16 disks assigned to that disk group. You will notice that disk 6 is a 1.2 terabyte disk compared to the rest of the drives, which are 900 gigs. Um, this is because we had a disk failure. The 900 gigs weren't available at the time. I don't know if they were permanently discontinued, but since this unit is under an active HPE care pack for warranty and support, um, HPE will replace faulty items with the next best comparable item. In this case, it was a 1.2 terabyte SAS uh, dual port disk. So other than that, um, jumping over to the test system, we have a Windows 11 virtual machine. Um, now keep in mind, all of these tests will be performed over iSCSI using MPIO, multipath input output. That means that not only do we have a redundant connection to both the NAS and the SAN, but we will also have the combined speed. Um, the MPIO is configured in a round robin configuration. So every bundle of data goes over the next available link 
which gives us the combined throughput of the connections. Um, you cannot do that with lag or LACP. And I know that those are uh, very heavily talked about things when it comes to these NASes. If you're gonna be using iSCSI, do not use lag, do not use LACP. Um, you wanna make sure that you have uh, each interface configured with its own IP address and that you will be using MPIO just to make sure that you get the redundancy as well as the combined throughput over a single connection. Now, starting off this test, uh, currently at present, this Windows 11 VM, we are accessing it via VMware Horizon, uh, configured as a VDI virtual desktop infrastructure uh, virtual machine. And this is how we're gonna be conducting our test. We're gonna be using Crystal Diskmark IO. We have a number of different tests here. Uh, we're going to be playing with a one gig test file as well as a 16 gig test file. We're gonna be doing five retries of each particular test. And you'll notice that we've got two identical ones for the five or for the one gig file and we've got two identical for the 16 gig file that is because one is a standard benchmark and the other is using the real world performance uh, benchmark so with all of that being said let's get to the testing at present it's sitting on the msa 2040 um, i'm going to kick off this test right now on the five times one file and while we run this i'm going to be disconnecting to let this run because it will take some time and i'll be back as soon as that is completed Alrighty, and welcome back. Let's go over some of these benchmarks. Now, you'll notice the two tests on the left are the typical benchmark profiles for the one and 16 gig file. The two benchmarks on the right are for one and 16 gig of real, real world performance. So let's take a look at the left side first. You can generally see that we just about got to a thousand megabytes per second. Now, technically over a 10 gig link, um, I could be wrong, but I've seen benchmarks get up to about uh, 1100, 1100 megabytes per second. So I don't think that we're maxing out the 10 gig link. We're just underneath it. Um, and that's especially obvious on the write speeds. Um, generally, we're getting about uh, either 600, uh, 768 megabytes per second on writes with the 16 gig file and about 773 megabytes per second with writes on the one gig test file. Now, Jumping into real world performance, um, with the one gig file, we're getting 612 megabyte per second reads, 484 megabyte per second writes. Uh, the IOPS are a little bit depressing here. Uh, 3300 IOPS on the reads and 2100 on the writes, jumping down even further to 1000 IOPS on the reads on the 16 gig file and uh, 2000 IOPS on the write. Now keep in mind that you're going to be noticing the decrease in the IOPS on the larger test file because that test file exceeds the amount of cache that the MSA 2040 controllers has, obviously. And uh, that's why there's a decrease with some of these tests that get done. I got to say, it's, it's a little depressing seeing these results. Uh, back in the day, the MSA 2040 was actually a pretty powerful SAN until around the time, I believe it was the Spectre and Meltdown mitigations that came out as a firmware update available for this unit. Um, the firmware updates also have to be completed on the hosts. I noticed that once that was in place, um, I started experiencing substantial performance losses with the MSA 2040 SAN. So, Anyways, we've got these numbers. At the end of this video, we're going to be jumping and doing a side-by-side -side comparison, comparing these. So the next steps are going to be to do a storage vMotion and migrate this virtual machine over to the DS1621 Plus NAS, uh, which is also going to be hosted on iSCSI with MPIO. And I'm going to go take care of that, and we'll be right back. I just storage vMotion the virtual machine from the MSA 2040 onto the DS1621 Plus, and now it's time to start off some of these benchmarks um, on the same Windows 11 VM. So again, as you can see, all the same tests, we're just gonna be running these one by one and then comparing the numbers afterwards. Uh, I'll just start kicking these off now and I'm gonna speed up this section so you don't have to watch the entire thing. Now this is pretty interesting. The test just completed and uh, you wouldn't expect these types of results. Anyway, so on the one gig test file and the 16 gig test file of the uh, default uh, profile instead of crystal disk mark, we're hitting 2,200 megabytes per second on read speeds and we're hitting 1,700 megabytes 
per second on write speeds on the one gig test file and uh, very close with the 16 gig test file as well. We've got 2200 megabytes per second reads and uh, 1600 megabyte per second writes. Now, this these these are high speed. We're taking advantage of those uh, two 10 gig NICs. And in addition to that, it makes you wonder if we're hitting 2200 with the two NICs, um, have we hit the limit of those two NICs? Like, would we actually benefit from a third 10 gig connection? Who knows, that's sort of the scope of the video. Either way, it's very interesting to note. Uh, random 4K, 66 megabytes per second read, uh, 55 write, uh, very similar on the uh, 16 gig test file as well. Now keep in mind, this does not have cache, unlike the MSA, which does. Now jumping over to real world performance profile benchmarks, on the one gig, we've got about 800 uh, megabytes per second read, uh, about 800. We'll just give it that uh, 0.2 or whatever it needs to get up to 800 megabyte per second writes. Uh, the 16 gig test file is very similar as well, just under 800 megabytes per second on both the reads and writes. Now, the thing that's pretty sweet about this is if we take a look at the random 4K IOPS, we're hitting 5,500 IOPS on the read and 5,500 IOPS on the write with the one gig test file. There's a small chance that those are a little bit higher than the 16 gig test file because some of the RAM may have cached a small percentage of that. Um, but now if we jump down to the 16 gig test file, we've got 4,800 IOPS on the reads and 3,200 IOPS on the writes. Now keep again in mind that I do not have cache enabled on the Synology DS1621+. Plus. If we turn it on, we would probably hit some crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. So just keep that in mind. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these benchmarks, I'm gonna plot them on a table and we can do a head-to-head -head comparison with the Synology DS1621 Plus versus the MSA 2040. Okay, so I've tallied up the results and I gotta say these are pretty freaking interesting. Let's jump over to it. Okay, so right now we are looking at the comparison of the one gig test file on the left, we have the Synology's DS1621 Plus. On the right, we have the HPE MSA 2040. So let's take a look at the default profile first. Um, you'll notice that the read and write sequential speeds are a lot faster with the uh, 1621 Plus running at RAID 5 versus the MSA 2040 running at RAID 10. Uh, you could say that it's more than double. Uh, another thing that's interesting too, random 4K reads and writes with the one gig file where you've got uh, 66 read, 55 megabytes per second write. Uh, the MSA is a little bit faster at 74 and 61. So that's, it's got something going for it. Jumping over to real world performance uh, with the one gig test file. The Synology was doing 803 reads, 799 writes, whereas the MSA 2040 was doing 612 and 484. Um, the Synology also won with the random 4Ks, uh, the IOPS. Now this is pretty cool. We're hitting 5,500 IOPS with the DS1621+, Plus, whereas the entry-level Enterprise SAN, the MSA2040, is only hitting 3,300 IOPS on the read and 2,100 on the write. Again, keep in mind that after the Spectre, Spectre and Meltdown mitigations, uh, firmware update, the uh, performance substantially decreased. Either way, it's still pretty cool to see. Now, we'll jump over to the 16 gig test file. We're hitting uh, 2200 megabytes per second reads on the Synology unit and 1600 uh, megabyte per second writes. Whereas on the MSA 2040, we're only doing 992 megabyte per second reads and um, 768 megabyte per second writes. Uh, Random 4K, 16 gig test file, the Synology is winning at 66 megabyte per second reads and 55 writes, whereas the uh, MSA 2040 did 42 reads. Surprisingly, two megabytes per second faster on the random 4K writes. Um, everything else is still, you know, looking better on the Synology unit. Now, jumping down to real world performance, uh, 797, 779, around 800 megabyte per second read and writes, we're getting uh, 470 and 490 on the MSA 2040 entry level SAN. Again, random 4K IOPS. This is just freaking beautiful. 4,800 IOPS reads, 3,200 writes on the Synology unit, whereas we're getting 1,000 reads on the MSA and 2,000 on the writes. Overall, I guess you could say that the Synology DS1621 Plus absolutely spanked 
the HPE MSA 2040 entry level enterprise SAN. Again, keep in mind the SAN is was purchased in 2014. I think it was actually released sometime in 2013. Um, so it's it's not a direct comparison. There's a number of reasons why you would choose uh, something like an MSA 2040 um, over a DS1621 plus the redundancies, um, dual controllers. Uh, the SAS discs have dual ports, whereas the WD Red Pro drives and the Synology only have one port per drive. So again, you're losing a lot of redundancy. Um, however, this is just a fun test to see how a newer NAS from Synology would do head to head against a eight year old, nine year old SAN from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So anyways, it's still pretty nice how they compare. And, and this just goes to show, you know, I've been running the MSA 2040 in my home lab since my business didn't need it anymore. And uh, I just got that uh, Synology DS1621 Plus that Synology was nice enough to send me. And I gotta say, you know, doing this head to head, if you're configuring this for your small business or for your home lab or whatever, um, these Synology units are pretty powerful little suckers. So anyways, I hope the video was entertaining. Please make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Again, I'm Stephen Wagner. You can visit my, my blog at www.stephenwagner.com. Have a fantastic day.